Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video we are going to be doing a reading update. Again, it's been a couple months since I've filmed a wrap up, mainly because I have been really busy this summer. Moving out from college to traveling to starting my new internship, a lot happened very quickly. I also haven't been reading as much this year as in past years, and so even if I was doing wrap ups, I would have posted wrap ups where it'd be like two bucks a video. I really do want to start getting back into filming my traditional wrap ups where I talk about the movies and TV shows that I'm watching just because I've been getting back into watching movies. I also opened up a letterbox profile where I kind of rate and review all of the movies that I watch kind of like I do on Goodreads. So I've been really having a fun time with that. And I just want to go back to the wrap ups that I used to do every month where I chat about the books, the movies, the TV shows that I'm watching. I am moving into college in the next 10 days. So we'll see if that even ends up happening because usually when I'm a lot busier is when I tend to not film my wrap ups. This summer was definitely not what I expected in terms of reading. I expected this summer as most summers go to have read a lot of books and to have made a lot of progress on my Goodreads goal, but I'm actually six books behind on my Goodreads goal. I set out this year with the intention of my Goodreads goal being 52 books, which equates to a book a week. I felt like that was like a pretty doable Goodreads goal. And I wouldn't say necessarily like I'm in a reading slump. I haven't been reading as much. I've been busy and also the times when I'm not busy, I've been leaning more towards watching movies and TV shows. And so today I'm gonna update you guys on the books that I read in the months of May, June, and July. I'm not going to change my Goodreads goal just yet. I feel like I'm just gonna leave it. I'm not the type of person where if I don't complete my Goodreads goal, I'm heartbroken. I do think even though I'm six books behind, there may be time to catch up, but I'm also not gonna put pressure on myself to complete my Goodreads goal this year because I think when you just leave room for grace and you allow yourself the space to not read when you don't feel like reading in the long run that kind of prevents the joy being taken away from something that you love like reading just a healthy reminder for those of you guys who may feel behind or guilty because you're not as on track as you want to be with your goodreads goal it's okay it's literally just a number at the end of the year so the first book that I finished in the month of May is Electra. This is by Jennifer Saint. This is the companion novel to her debut novel, Ariadne, which I read last year. I loved, I rated it a five out of five stars. I rated this one similarly a five out of five stars. I enjoyed this a lot. This book is very similar to her debut novel in terms of it being a kind of Greek myth told in the perspective of a female, but instead of just having one main character or one POV in this book, we follow three POVs. So from what I remember, because this is it's been a couple months though, since I've read it, the three main perspectives are Clytemestra, Princess Cassandra, and Electra. And this is kind of these three very different POVs during the Trojan War. I have read a lot in about the Trojan War and I've learned about the Trojan War extensively, but never through a female perspective. And that's one of the things that I really appreciate about Jennifer Sain's books is that we get kind of these Greek myths that we've always heard through such a male lens through a female perspective. And reading that through a female perspective, I feel like I just connect with the story all the more. She has beautiful, beautiful writing. This book also features the, a common theme of a mother's heartbreak, which is something you see in Ariadne. So if you like that trope or that theme, it definitely runs true in this book. Lots of very complex family dynamics going on and just overall such a great time. I feel like if you like books like Circe and The Song of Achilles, definitely pick up Jennifer Saint's books. I think I read this all like in the span of less than a week because it was that good. The next book that I picked up was Good Girl Complex by Elle Kennedy. I picked this up in the airport when I was in Turkey because I was looking for a book to read on the plane on the way back. And I just picked this up randomly because the cover kind of looked interesting. And also I know Elle Kennedy is the author of The Deal, which is very, very popular on TikTok. This one was not as good as I expected. It's funny because when I posted that I was reading this on my Instagram stories, everyone replied, like a bunch of people replied to my story and said that they hated this book, they DNF'd this book, that this book is really bad. I definitely agree with that sentiment. I rated this one a two out of five stars. It just was not good at all. It basically rips off the plot of After, but it's not even done well. 
I've never seen After, but I know kind of like the plot behind it. And everyone kind of says this is the exact same plot in After. It just was not do done well. I felt like it was like poor writing. I felt like the characters were just so two dimensional to the point where like I didn't even care or want to root for them. And I think that is such a huge flaw. Like if you don't even have characters that I can root for or get along with, why am I reading your book? And the thing I think that shocked me the most about this is that I thought that this was like one of her backlisted titles because the deal is so popular and people love her books. But no, this book came out after the deal, which I was very surprised by. I don't know if she just was really successful with the deal and she just got lazy or if she got lucky, but this was not it. Definitely don't recommend anyone pick up this book. I could have DNF'd it, frankly, 100 pages in, I could tell that I wasn't gonna enjoy it, but I wanted to give it like a full chance. Do I regret DNFing it? Just just slightly because it took me like a month to get through this book and I feel like if I had just DNFed it earlier on I could have gone through more books. The next book that I picked up is Finding Me by Viola Davis. I listened to the audiobook of this which I definitely recommend the audiobook. I always recommend the audiobooks when it comes to memoirs because 99% of the time they're narrated by the author themselves so it it's feels like it's such a cool experience because it feels like you have this famous person telling you the story of, of their life and that's what this felt like. Viola Davis is someone that I have always really looked up to. I think she is just an incredible, incredible actress and you really see such deep emotions that she conveys through her acting. She is truly so talented and in this book you kind of get an understanding and a glimpse of like why she is such a great actress and where she draws a lot of her emotion and her inspiration in her acting from. There's a lot of childhood trauma that she addresses in this book and so I would definitely look into the content warnings of this book because it is very heavy and she had such a dark childhood and a dark past but ultimately that is all a part of her story right like she brings up this idea that I found was interesting in the book is like once someone becomes famous you kind of start to look at their life backwards like you kind of see their life as starting with their success and like looking back at their life in a backwards trajectory but really every famous person every successful person has an origin story has like a whole life behind them that started before their fame and success and so this deals with a lot of that it is just such a beautiful book that you can learn so many life lessons in and it's very very short as well usually memoirs can kind of be on the longer side this one is under th 300 pages so if you're looking to get into non some nonfiction, if you're looking for some memoir recs definitely pick up this one those are the only books that i completed between the months of May and July. Again, it's not a lot, so I wanna chat really quickly about the three books that I'm currently reading at the moment and a few books that I have on my TBR that I want to get to in the coming weeks. So I'm currently reading The Roughest Draft. I honestly think that I should be able to finish this in the next few days because I have very little bit of little of it left. I got this rec from Chandler Ainsley's channel. She was doing a vlog where she was recommending books instead of popular books. So books she likes, books she thinks did it better than the popular books. And I think she was saying this did it better than book lovers, which I believe she was kind of talking about how like this is a better enemies to lovers than Emily Henry's book lovers. I've never read Emily Henry's books. I know her books are really, really popular. I have Beach Street and People We Met on Vacation both on my TBR, but who knows when I'll even get to those books. But I wanted to pick up this one because I think the premise sounded really, really interesting. So basically it's these two authors. They're a very famous co-author duo. They wrote like three books in the past together. For some odd reason, they mysteriously broke up. They stopped writing books together and no one knows why. Four years goes on and all of a sudden they're writing a book together in Florida. So you kind of get to see in flashbacks what happened four years prior to make them stop writing books together and also why they're all a sudden mysteriously writing a book together now it's really really interesting a very slow burn it is really beautifully written like a lot of beautiful passages another cool aspect of the book is it includes passages and prose and like chapters from the book that they're actually writing which is really cool because you kind of get to see like almost two stories within one i don't think i've ever really read a book about someone writing a book before so i feel like that is also cool because like seeing a author's process is very interesting and unique because I think as a reader we kind of only kind of see the final product 
but there's a lot of work that goes into writing books. So far I'm enjoying it. I'm a good ways through it. I have less than 100 pages left of it and I should be finishing this in the next few days. So stay tuned for the vlogs to see what my final thoughts are on this book. The next book that I am currently in the middle of is Nightcrawling by Layla Motley. I've talked about this quite a bit on my vlogs and also on my Instagram stories. I'm really, really excited about this book because my internship at the women's center we are we have a program like we have an event in august where leila motley is going to be coming in for this event and it's really really exciting it's actually a collaborative event with bookshop santa cruz it's like the bookstore in santa cruz and it's an in-person event unfortunately i can't be there because it is going to be in august when i think it's on my first day of classes at berkeley so unfortunately i won't be able to make it but we're still having like the book club so every week we kind of meet we talk about the chapters that we read and discussed and we have really really amazing conversations truly not enough time to talk about this book with these people but absolutely loving this book there's just so much to unpack with this and i think that there's no better way to kind of consume this story than in community with other people kind of like discussing everything that's going on this is another one of those cases where it is dealing with very heavy topics so i would definitely recommend looking into the content warnings of this it's also based on like a true story so it takes place in oakland it's dealing with a police brutality and aggravated assault case our main character is very young she's a minor and so there's a lot going on with this book and i definitely recommend looking into the trigger warnings before proceeding with this book because it is very heavy. To me, the most shocking aspect of this book is that Layla Motley wrote this book when she was 19 years old. I am genuinely baffled because it is, it has such beautiful, beautiful prose, beautiful, beautiful writing. And listening to the audiobook of this, it feels like I'm listening to poetry read aloud. It is so beautiful. So I recommend the audiobook for this one for sure because the narrator does such a great job at like encompassing this character's voice and bringing this story to life. Such a good book. I'm currently in the middle of one more book. It's a lot, I know. Usually I try and keep it down to one or two books that I'm currently in the middle of, but I'm also reading Pachinko by Min, Lee, Min Jin Lee. Isn't this cover just absolutely stunning i know there's the other cover that i typically see i think that's of the paperback edition of this book but i love this cover with like the sage green background i got this in a book of the month box i think as an add-on i believe yeah because it says on the back that it's from february of 2017 it is just such a beautiful beautiful story it's it tells a story of this korean family through generations from the 1900s until i, I want to say like modern day i'm really not super super far into it i'm about a little over 100 pages into it this book is very very long but i'm listening to this book on audio i really like the audio book i feel like it's just very atmospheric and immersive so that's what i'm doing for this one especially since it is a longer one i'm absolutely loving it i've always heard such great things about this book so it's been on my tbr for a while i figured it was time for me to pick it up speaking of tbrs let's talk about some of the books that i have on my to be read list first of which is salvation by bell hooks i bought this yesterday at a really cool bookstore in la called the reparations bookstore it's a black owned bookstore and my friend ice two recommended this one just because i love reading all about love by bell hooks so i'm really excited to dive into this one because this one is specifically written for black people in the black community so for this one i'm going to try and kind of mirror the same process where i just read like a chapter every day or a chapter every few days take it as slow as possible and really just try and absorb it that's what i think you just need to do with bell hooks his books it's not really like a start it and read it as fast as possible experience the next book that i have on my tbr is confess by colleen hoover can you guys let me know down below for those of you guys who have read this if you think it's going to be good because i don't think i've heard anything about confess i'm trying to get through all of colleen hoover's books and so this is definitely one of her more backlisted titles i feel like when did this book come out okay this one came out in 2015 so a couple years ago definitely before some of her more popular ones i really like the cover of it um 
With Colleen Hoover, it's usually I either don't really enjoy it or I love it. So there's kind of no in between with her books, I feel like. So we'll see how this, this one goes. But I have hope because I feel like there are some Colleen Hoover books that are not as popular on TikTok, but are really underrated. And then recently I watched the show, The Summer I Turned Pretty, as everyone on and their mother has seen it. And I want to go back and read the books. So I got the entire trilogy from Barnes & Nobles. They had this little cute little box set. So I got The Summer I Turned Pretty, It's Not Summer Without You, and We'll Always Have Summer. And look how stunning these covers look. Honestly, I wasn't gonna read the books because I always heard that the books are just not nearly as good as the show. But the fact that we have to wait another year to find out what happens next is just not acceptable. Also, these covers were just so cute. I could not resist getting them and I figured if I'm going to buy them, I might as well read them. They're really short, so I feel like they shouldn't take too long. Like I could low key read these in a week, all three. They're all very, very short. And I'm sure from my experience with Jenny Han's writing, her books are very easy to read and very like quick to read, quick to get through, so. We'll see how I feel about those, but overall my expectations are very low because I know that the books are not as good as the show. I have another nonfiction book, Hood Feminism. This is Notes from the Women That a Movement Forgot by Miki Kendall. So this is a nonfiction book about um, feminism from a more intersectional lens. Very excited for this one. This is a book that I've been wanting to read for a long time and I can't wait to learn from it. And last but not least, I have a fantasy book. I want to start sprinkling in some fantasy in my reading a little more because I feel like if I go back and look at my Goodreads, I don't think there's a single fantasy book that I've read this year and I've just like fell out of love with fantasy in a lot of ways. I think it's because I feel like I'm at a place where I feel like I've read every good concept for fantasy and it's just taking a lot more to wow me in terms of fantasy. I think also my attention span is just getting shorter over time and so when I read fantasy books, it's harder for me to stay as focused and feel engrossed in the story as before. But I picked up this book, it's called The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah from Book of the Month. I chose it as my Book of the Month book from June of 2022. And I really wanted to read it because it's written by a Muslim author. And I feel like, you know, the least I can do is support my Muslim fantasy authors and my black fantasy authors. So I'm excited. I have no idea what this is about. I've never heard anything about it. I kind of want to just go into it with a blind eye and we'll see if this re-sparks my love of fantasy because fantasy used to be two, three years ago, my favorite genre. So my battery is flashing and that I feel like is the best sign that it is time to end today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed today's reading up Date. Let me know down below what is one book that you read recently and what is one book that you want to get to. If you're not following me on my other social medias, make sure to check out my Instagram at isata underscore amadou. I also have a podcast called Disclaimers Aside that is also in the description box. Give that a listen. I post bi-weekly episodes over on there. Besides that, I will see you guys in my next video.